In this contribution, we will present the formulation and first simulations of a new microscopic uh, model for lane-free and lane-based traffic. It is a synthesis of the social force model for pedestrians and classical car following models. From the social force model, it has the formulation in terms of social forces and its full uh, two-dimensionality. From the car following models, it inherits the suitability for describing fast vehicles and an absence of crashes, if this is the case for the underlying uh, car following model. Here we will present the model and apply it uh, for two scenarios mixed traffic with cars, trucks and motorcycles, and also lane-free mixed uh, traffic flow bicycles. As underlying model, we will use the intelligent driver model, but other car models are possible as well. The nice thing about this uh, car model is that it can be parameterized easily to different sorts of uh, moving agents, fast moving ones and also and slow moving ones, even pedestrians. Also, this model can reflect different driving styles, driving personalities. For example, an aggressive driver, experienced responsive driver, a relaxed driver, and also an experienced defensive driver. The general concept is that of the social force model for pedestrians. It is force-based and we have three force contributions. First, the self-driving force, which is just the acceleration of the intelligent uh, particles without any other um, traffic flow. Second, we have the interaction force uh, with the neighboring vehicles, obstacles, traffic lights, basically with any moving or standing objects on the road. And third, we have interactions with the boundaries in the drivable area. All these force contributions are additive. Because we have a vectorial uh, model, we need to formulate the longitudinal and the lateral forces as a function of the longitudinal and lateral gaps and the position. For the longitudinal part, we separate the car form model in a free flow and interacting contribution. As I have already said, the free flow is just the car following model if all gaps tend to infinity and the interacting part is a rest. So this is just the one dimensional start. Now if a follower is on a collision course to a leader, the longitudinal force is just equal to the car following interaction. If a follower is not on collision course, then we assume that the longitudinal interaction decreases exponentially with the lateral gap. The same applies also for the boundaries. And finally, all forces of all objects in a certain neighborhood are added. Now we come to a formulation of the lateral uh, force contributions. First, we have also a lateral self force, and this is non zero if you uh, want to arrive at a certain target, for example, when entering the drivable area you want to go to the middle of this area or you may also want to leave this drivable area. The crucial concept of our model is derived from the incentive criterion of the lane change model mobile. The mobile says I want to change lanes if I can drive faster on the other lanes. That means if the acceleration there is higher and we generalize this to 2D by demanding that the lateral force is proportional to the gradient of the longitudinal force, or longitudinal acceleration within the lateral direction. This automatically leads to repulsive forces, um, which are also exponentially decreasing if the lateral gaps to vehicles and boundaries um, increase. Moreover, if the car foil model is formulated such that a collision leads to maximum repulsive force, we also have this um, exponentially decreasing force at uh, close lateral gaps for neighbors driving in parallel. Finally, 
we can introduce lanes by a floor potential with a maximum parallel to the lane markers. Some traffic participants can also disobey lanes, for example motorcyclists. How does the force felt of the intelligent particle model looks like? First, with the simplest case, we have a simple leader. All these arrows denote the vectoral forces. A follower with a certain speed of 10 meter per second would have at any possible uh, position laterally or longitudinally behind or before the leader. Now we come to a more um, complicated um, situation. Vehicles, the leading vehicles are further apart, then the follower could also drive in uh, between. Finally, we can also add the road boundaries and you see that road boundaries both lead to a lateral force uh, going away from the boundaries, but also to a longitudinal force. That means if the road gets too narrow, then the vehicle will just um, stop. This is the interactive simulator, which you can also simulate uh, on the internet. Just go on my homepage and um, click at the left navigation button, uh, a mixed um, and traffic flow. Let's uh, start it. At start, you will see that we have uh, arbitrarily um, road and geometry with some bottlenecks. We can also change um, the uh, vehicle composition, for example, more trucks or uh, less trucks. We can also uh, make the uh, geometry more regular um, by uh, removing this variable width. Now in order to get to our free lane bike and um, car and truck simulation, we will introduce the floor field and also re uh, reduce the width um, such that we have basically three um, lanes, for example such. Now we can increase the bike percentage and we are basically done. We can also uh, use traffic lights and we can also throw other objects um, to see how the interaction with um, different obstacles uh, works. This is the preset uh, version of my simulator for which I will now show results. In this version I have just uh, placed uh, tra some two traffic lights in advance and also introduced automatically switching every cycle time of 45 seconds, uh, reflecting the real situation of empirical trajectories I will now um, show. In order to compare the model and the simulation with reality, I consider the trajectory data of a new um, traffic initiative, the P. Neumer project. This, we have 10 drones observing several days of um, inner city um, traffic of Athens. Now I just picked um, a single drone, drone number one. First looked at the data. So this is a, um, a heat map of the transformed data. There were no um, lanes um, given, so first I um, did a data-driven lane reconstruction of a certain road, the road Academias, uh, which is um, one-way um, traffic directed to the southeast. So this is this road and the data-driven lane re reconstruction suitably rotated, of course gives basically uh, three lanes and here are four lanes which just will um, turn away. If I plot trajectories xt, trajectories of the middle lane, the middle lane that's uh, basically this lane, or in this plot it's just here the middle lane, uh, then I see there are also traffic lights. The traffic lights were not given, I have to add them just um, that the obje obvious trajectories are um, reflected. Now we compare this with the simulation and of course it's, it's still not quantitatively similar but it's also different simulation geometries but you see that the motorcycles which are the blues and the normal cars 
overlap something. This does not mean that there are collisions, for example, here, but just that the motor cycles drive not at the center of the lanes, but um, in between. So here are basically the black are um, vehicular traffic and the blues are the motorcycles. And you see that the motorcycles basically drive in between the lanes. How to simulate that? I just added the floor field only for the, for the other vehicles with the black ones, while the motorcycles just ignore the floor field. There is some space where the motorcycles can squeeze in uh, between. If you uh, look at a um, histogram, you see that the Motorcycles use just the space in between and we have four gaps between the lanes and also between the lane and the road boundaries. The second application of our model I want to show is bicycle flow. For this I adapted the road geometry, the vehicle dimensions and the model parameters. For example, introducing a desired speed of 5 meters per second equal to um, 18 um, kilometers per hour. When starting the simulation with um, two meter um, bicycle path width, you see that spontaneously at the inflow a staggered following mode um, occurs. Here we have inflow at the center, but now it, it becomes staggered. However, if I uh, introduce a bottleneck by reducing the outflow capacity just by narrowing the road, then we will see that in the congested zone, this staggered following mode transforms to just a two-lane bike traffic. If I now increase the road width, the bicycle path width, to say um, 2.5 meters, then we see that now we have spontaneously three lanes in the congested um, region while in the free region we have a more this irregular staggered following because that is just more comfortable for the cyclists. Of course, if we reduce uh, the lane, then we will, whenever it's possible, we will just get a single lane. Finally, we analyze the simulations. First, for the initial bike path width of two meters, here, this is the outflow bottleneck, this is the resulting congestion, and this is the uh, free for low um, entering here, the congested area. At a cross section, we see here the staggering, staggering following mode, and here the two lane uh, mode, and this is just the bottleneck, which is such a single lane. When um, plotting the histograms of a lane usage, we see we have two distinct lanes. This small peak is just an artifact of the bottleneck where only one lane is possible. We have proposed a fully 2D model based on classical 1D car following models. It has the structure of a social force model, but it is also for high-speed vehicles. With a floor field representing lanes, we could reproduce zipper merges and the use of free space between the lanes by motorcyclists. For lane-free traffic, the balance of forces leads to spontaneous formation of lanes and staggered following in agreement with observations.